You're standing in your bathroom, twisting open a jar of Vaseline. You scoop out a fingertip of clear, greasy jelly and spread it across your cracked lips. It feels slick, almost waxy, with that familiar texture you've known since childhood. It's the same stuff your grandmother used on her hands every winter. The same stuff hospitals put on newborns to protect their skin. Simple, familiar, unremarkable. But here's something that might surprise you. That jelly on your lips started as crude oil, the same thick black sludge that becomes gasoline for your car. Somewhere between an oil refinery and your medicine cabinet, one of the dirtiest substances on earth became pure enough to eat. And the man who invented it did exactly that. Robert Chesebro ate a spoonful of Vaseline every single day. He lived to 96. Petroleum jelly was discovered by accident in 1859 on the oil fields of Titusville, Pennsylvania, the site of America's first commercial oil well. Workers drilling for crude noticed a waxy residue building up on their pump rods. They called it rod wax and considered it a nuisance. It clogged equipment, jammed valves, and slowed production. But they also noticed something strange. Workers who got this residue on cuts and burns healed faster than those who didn't. A young chemist named Robert Chesbro heard about this rod wax and traveled to Pennsylvania to investigate. He collected samples, brought them back to his laboratory in Brooklyn, and spent the next 11 years refining the substance. He tested it on himself obsessively, cutting and burning his own skin, then applying his refined jelly to track healing. When he was satisfied it worked, he patented the process and named his product Vaseline. That name stuck. Today, Vaseline is a brand, but petroleum jelly is the generic substance. And it all begins with the same crude oil that powers civilization. Here's the thing nobody tells you. Crude oil isn't one substance. It's a mixture of thousands of different hydrocarbons, molecules made of hydrogen and carbon atoms arranged in chains of varying lengths. Short chains become gases like propane and butane. Medium chains become gasoline and diesel fuel. Long chains become waxes, lubricants, and heavy oils. Petroleum jelly comes from the longest, heaviest fraction. The thick residue left at the bottom after everything else has been extracted and sold. The process starts with fractional distillation. Crude oil gets heated to over 400 degrees Celsius in massive industrial furnaces and pumped into a distillation tower. A steel column standing 60 meters tall, visible from miles away at any refinery. Different hydrocarbons vaporize at different temperatures and rise to different heights. Light gases collect at the top. Gasoline condenses in the middle sections. Heavy residue, thick, dark, and smelling strongly of tar, sinks to the bottom. That residue contains the raw material for petroleum jelly, but it's far from ready for your skin. Next comes dewaxing. The heavy residue gets mixed with chemical solvents like methyl ethyl ketone and chilled to negative 20 degrees Celsius. At this frigid temperature, wax crystals form and get filtered out through specialized equipment. What remains is crude petrolatum, a yellow semi-solid mass that smells like motor oil and is still completely unsafe for cosmetic use. The final stage is purification, and this is where the magic happens. Cosmetic-grade petroleum jelly undergoes triple refinement. First, acid treatment removes reactive compounds that could irritate skin. Second, clay filtering absorbs color molecules and odor compounds. Third, hydrogenation saturates any remaining double bonds in the hydrocarbon chains, making the molecules completely stable and unreactive. The result is white, odorless, and chemically inert, so stable that bacteria cannot grow in it. Oxygen cannot degrade it, and it can sit on a shelf for decades without changing. But the strangest part 
isn't the purification. It's what petroleum jelly actually does on your skin. Petroleum jelly doesn't moisturize. It doesn't add water to your skin or nourish cells with nutrients. What it does is seal. The long hydrocarbon chains create an occlusive barrier, a waterproof layer that prevents moisture from escaping. Your skin's natural water stays trapped underneath. Dermatologists call this moisture retention rather than moisturization. That's why it works on wounds, burns, and dry skin equally. It simply stops water loss and lets your body heal itself. Here's where the story flips. The same petroleum that becomes Vaseline on pharmacy shelves also becomes industrial lubricant in factories. The difference isn't the source, it's the purification level. Pharmaceutical grade petrolatum meets USP standards with strict limits on polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Industrial grade skips the expensive triple refinement. Same starting material, same basic chemistry, completely different safety profiles. The jar on your nightstand and the grease on machine gears came from the same barrel of crude oil separated only by how much refining someone paid for. So how do you see petroleum jelly differently now? Next time you open a jar, look at the texture. Pure petroleum jelly should be translucent, not opaque white. Added whiteners mask lower purity. Smell it. Pharmaceutical grade has virtually no odor. Any petroleum smell means incomplete refinement. Check the label for USP or BP designation. These indicate pharmaceutical standards, not just cosmetic grade. Feel the consistency between your fingers. High quality petroleum jelly melts smoothly at body temperature without graininess. Grainy texture suggests incomplete de-waxing, larger wax crystals that shouldn't be there. And notice how long the barrier lasts. Properly refined petrolatum stays effective for hours because the molecular chains are uniform. So next time you twist open that familiar jar, you'll know. You're not just applying jelly. You're applying refined crude oil, purified through chemistry until black gold becomes clear medicine. That's the process. We reveal how things actually work, one story at a time. If there's something you'd like us to explore next, let us know. Until then, trust the process.